Father God, we thank you. We bless you for those who uh, gave, those who desired to give, but had it not. We lift it up to you that it would bring glory to you and the earth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Y'all feel better. Amen. God is good. We're going to going to move further in the, the service here this morning. Um, you have some announcements in the, uh, the sermon notes uh, for uh, your attention. You can refer to those. Please take uh, the notes booklet with you. Um, I would encourage you to take notes uh, as we preach. Amen. As we preach, take notes uh, with you. But I want to just give quick announcement. Uh, Bible study this week, Wednesday, evening 6 to 7 p.m. Um, uh, uh, praise God if somebody can tell me who, well, praise God anyway, but who can tell me what book we're in? Isaiah. Amen. We are halfway through the Bible. Did y'all know that? We halfway through the Bible. Amen. Who's learned something? Something, something. Amen. Who's been encouraged in some kind of way? Amen. Praise God. Anybody been strengthened in their faith while we've been walking? Amen. Praise God. So just join us here. It's simple. Uh, we send out the link to, to everybody every week. Everybody. Uh, members, non-members, anybody whose email address we have, we send you the link to Zoom. All you have to do Wednesday night, 6 p.m., click the link. Amen. Just click the link. You don't have to be on camera. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to have your name. You don't have to have your picture. I just want to encourage you to listen in. You could, I don't know what comes on on Wednesday night because I teach, but you could have your show. What, what come on? Sisters. Okay. <laughs> they say it's before or after. Like you can have your show on in the background. Do what you do. Just listen in. I think the Lord will speak to you in some way. Amen. It's free. Amen. It's free. Amen. I want to remind you that uh, the final Saturday in this month, the 28th, uh, we'll have leaders training. All the leaders, raise your hand. That should be everybody. Everybody in here is a leader. Amen. Everybody. Everybody. Amen. Uh, we will have leadership uh, training here on Saturday, September 28th, 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, Bishop Jeffrey Dudley from New Life in Christ uh, in O'Fallon uh, will be with us. He'll be our facilitator. Amen. Um, we're trying to get a count because we want to make sure we feed you all. Amen. So please, please, please reach out to the church office uh, during the week and just say, I'm going to be there. Even if you can't stay the whole time because you have to be somewhere at 11, whatever it might be, just let them know that you're coming. Amen. Even if you have to show up at nine o'clock, just let them know you're coming. Amen. And if you sleep in on Saturday, that Saturday, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, um, and you wake up and you say, oh, it's 830. I missed it. No, you come on out. We'll have a seat for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I want to ask that uh, Morning Star uh, keep uh, uh, Carrie Clay lifted uh, in your uh, in your prayers. Amen. Uh, many of you know that she tragically lost uh, a daughter this past week. Amen. So we're praying God's continued comfort and keeping power uh, over that family during their time of loss and uh, grief. And then I ask that you just keep each other lifted up because we don't always know it all. Amen. But we know that everybody's going through something somewhere, no matter how good it looks on the outside. Everybody's carrying something. Amen. Even if they don't confess it up in here, they're carrying something. So just keep each other lifted uh, in, your, uh, in your prayer time. Amen. So I'm going to try to preach this last sermon as best I can. Um, uh, I was going to, I'll say it. It's really four sermons in one. And I said, Lord, it's four <laughs> Look at some of y'all cringing. It's really four sermons in one, so I can't preach it all the way how I want to preach it. Each one of these uh, points that we're raising from the text is a point worth uh, noting. Uh, we could spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes on each one. I won't do that to you this morning. I just want to walk through the Bible with you. Um, I want to remind you before I have you stand and before we read that we've been preaching a series of sermons called Arrested. 
Amen. Has the series blessed anybody, arrested, blessed anybody? Amen. We participatory here, y'all. Y'all too quiet. Amen. Praise God. Love y'all. Too quiet. Um, it's blessed me. Amen. Um, we, we've been looking at the 16th chapter of Acts, and uh, the Lord put on my heart um, these four, I don't know, themes of being arrested. We talked about what it means to be arrested, to be seized, to be stopped. Uh, we talked about physical arrest, and for the visitors, I've never done anything, well, I won't say it that way. Let's just say it this way. I've only been arrested once. Amen. The visitor's like, what is going on up <laughs> <laughs> What's going on up in here? I gave a story, a uh, 17-year-old kid driving, trying to get on Scott Air Force Base to go to my first day of work, and I didn't know uh, that my license was suspended, and there's a whole story behind that, but I didn't know, and they politely, uh, the military police, they politely informed me, and then they, it wasn't really an arrest, they detained me, amen, until St. Clair County could come and um, ticket me. And then they let me go. My dad picked me up, and, and I went on home. Amen. And then got my little stuff in order. Amen. Praise God. Um, but I gave that. One, I'm retelling the story because I don't know what folks are saying I did now. <laughs> they said, did y'all know the pastor morning star been arrested? And who knows what the story is. But 20-whatever, um, 30-whatever years ago, um, that happened to me. But I was, I was on my way to work, and I was seized. I couldn't move forward. Uh, and sometimes in life, we're all arrested. Amen. Not, not physically uh, by the police, but we're all arrested. And we were looking at the 16th chapter of Acts, and we've talked through three, uh, three uh, themes of being arrested. The first one was uh, that the Apostle Paul was arrested by a vision, that he had some plans. Anybody ever have plans? Amen. Anybody? I got plans. I got plans for today. Amen. Somebody got plans for tonight. Somebody has plans for this week. He had a plan as to where he was going and God arrested him with a vision. God gave him a vision that where you're headed is not where you think you're headed, but I'm giving you a vision of where I would have you to go. Anybody God ever done that to you? Amen. God's done that to me where I thought I was headed. He didn't, he didn't allow me to go, but he had a plan that was better than my plan. Amen. He had a plan that was different from my plan. Amen. And, and so Paul was arrested by, uh, arrested by vision. And then the second week, we talked about this idea of being arrested by a word. Y'all remember there was a woman by the name of Lydia. She was a successful entrepreneurial type. Uh, she was a successful woman. And the record is she heard Paul talking. We don't know what he was talking about. But I suggested that he was talking about Jesus because that's all Paul ever talked about was Jesus. And she was arrested by something that she heard in the moment. And it changed her life. Anybody ever been arrested by a word? God just sent a word driving in your car. God sent a word. I was sitting in a barber's chair. Y'all say, no, you weren't. I was sitting in a barber's chair uh, the other night, uh, just the beard. And he was trimming me up and we were talking. And he's not a preacher, but he said something that arrested my attention. He just dropped some wisdom in a word. And we've been arrested by words from God. Words telling us to go. Uh, words telling us to be still. Words telling us to sit down. Amen. Words telling us to speak up. Word to tell us we can, we can make it. We can keep on keeping on. That greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We've been given words like his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. God will give a word. God will give a word. Don't you be anxious for anything. But you pray about everything. And the peace of God, it will guard your heart and your mind. God will send you a word. God will send you a word. God will tell you that his power is made perfect in the weaknesses of life. So, so you'll be like the Apostle Paul. You'll say, I boast all the more in my weaknesses because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Heard a young man at the walk yesterday say he was tired. He was tired and God gave me a word. He says, even the young men shall be tired and, and grow weary, but they that wait upon the Lord. Come on, I ain't just come here to see a sermon and sit down. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They, they shall run and not get weary. God will send you a word. God will send you a word. 
God will send you a word that, that no matter what happens, nothing will separate you from the love of God. Nothing, nothing, nothing in life will separate, nothing you did, nothing you failed to do will separate you from the love of God. God will give a word. And then last week we saw this great imagery, uh, this picture, this sister who was being um, manipulated. I used a different word last week, manipulated, uh, who was being used, who was demon possessed. She was arrested by Jesus. Amen. The power of Jesus. She had the spirit of divination where she was kind of like a fortune teller. You know, you go to the mall and somebody's sitting at a table and they have cards or you go into a booth or you call on the phone and they tell you about your life that, that she was demon possessed and she had this ability and other people would manipulate her and use her for their own benefit. Amen. They didn't care that she was bound as a slave and bound by a spirit. And Paul came along and he just, he just named one name. He named the name of Jesus. Y'all know people love to name drop. Y'all know people love dropping names who they know. Amen. And she just let him know, I know somebody. He let her know, I know somebody. He says, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm glad that there's one name. I'm glad that there's one name that's above every name. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad name of Jesus. Jesus is above sorrow. There, there's the name sorrow, but Jesus is above sorrow. And Jesus is above pain. Jesus is above heartache. Come on, somebody. Do you not know that Jesus' name is higher than cancer, higher than diabetes, higher than disability? Jesus' name is higher than depression, despair. It, it has to bow down to Jesus' name. That there is a name that is above every name. The name, no, no, I might not even get to the sermon today. The name is so powerful that the record says that at his name, every knee shall bow. At his name, every tongue, it, you got to, you got, you've been lying your whole life about what happened and when it happened and how it happened. But at his name, every tongue shall confess. What we gonna confess that Jesus Jesus the Christ he is Lord praise God for Jesus come on praise God for Jesus Jesus oh in the midnight Jesus when I know where I'm going Jesus and when I can't find my way Jesus when I get a good report Jesus and on the troublesome day Jesus at the name of Jesus and the demons had to get up out of there. I don't know where they went, but they had to get up out of there. And somebody should be crying out the name of Jesus in your house. I don't know where you're going to go, demon, but you got to get up out of here. On your, on your job, Jesus, before I go up in here and deal with what I got to deal with, Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, she was, she was, she was arrested. She was set free. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I just, I wanted y'all to know what y'all missed if y'all missed any of those messages. Amen. So when we, when we start the next series, Lord willing, in October, Conversations with Jesus, if you can make them, I want you to make each one of them. Amen. So we have a conversation with Jesus, but let me do this. Let me, let me land the plane on this series. Amen. I want to be mindful of time. 1054. Amen. It's 1054. Let us land the plane. Won't you stand to your feet? Get your blood flowing again while we read the scripture. Amen. Nine verses. Um, we've printed the scripture in the booklet for you. Y'all did so good last week. We did so good. We're going to do it again. Amen. We're going to read this together. Amen. Now, now, when I copied the text, there are these little footprints, so you'll see things like the letter E in brackets. We skip over that. Amen. We just want to read the verses. Amen. We're going to begin at verse 25. And 
I'm going to say one, two, three, and then we're going to read it together. Amen. One, and if I drop out, y'all keep going. Y'all show sure enough. Y'all, y'all bad. Y'all can do that. If I drop out, y'all keep going. About midnight, see, Simon says one, two, I, I just forgot to tell y'all how old I'm getting. I said I was going to count to three. Tell the truth, shun the devil. Okay, one, two, three. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you and we thank you. How sweet, how wonderful is your word. We thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for this gathered assembly. We thank you for the visitation of your spirit. Speak to this, your church. Help us today. Heal us today. Lord, we pray that the power of your spirit would guide us as we walk through your word. We ask, O God, that you would help it to find good ground in our hearts, that we wouldn't just be hearers of your word, but that we would be doers also. Encourage us and give us the courage to go out then and tell somebody what we heard. Help somebody know something more about your son, Jesus the Christ. We thank you. We bless you. It's in his name that we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Y'all did good. Give y'all selves a hand. Amen. 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 Gets gooder and gooder and better and better. Amen. Um, I was thinking about how to, how to get into this sermon. Amen. And um, my mind went back to a, it's a 90s movie. I know none of y'all have seen it. Um, the brother, um, brother Eddie Murphy, I think he was the producer uh, of, the, uh, of the film. Uh, the film was called Life. None of y'all seen that? Any of y'all seen that? Um, these two fellows had, um, I don't know, serendipitously bumped into one another, strangers. Um, they found themselves, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, Martin Lawrence, they found themselves, um, whether they wanted to or not, um, they got caught up together. And they were convicted of a crime, spoiler alert, that they did not commit. And uh, the movie just kind of chronicles their time over decades from the 1930s on, uh, their time serving life uh, in prison, Um, their desire to to escape, uh, to not be confined to where they were. Um, Anybody not seen the movie that want to see the movie? I got a spoiler alert. they said, go ahead. They said, Pastor, we all seen it. Um, um, they were able to escape what had confined them. Amen. Um, it's interesting, though, that's the exact opposite of what we find in this text. Uh, these brothers, like, uh, like Martin and like Eddie, they, they found themselves confined, Paul and Silas. Uh, they found themselves unjustly in prison. Um, they had done no deed. Uh, to warrant their arrest, and they had an opportunity to escape, uh, to flee, to run, uh, and yet they did not. 
And as I read through the text that we just read together, my mind just kept going back to this idea of being arrested by grace. Uh, They, along with this jailer, I believe, were arrested by grace. It's almost as if God was talking to me this week because I had a conversation with somebody this week about grace. They were telling me about being a supervisor on their job. They were telling me how folks were calling off of work, how every day there was a new excuse, how they had been behind on their work because folks weren't doing what they should do. They they were telling me that on one of the busiest days of the week, on on Friday, that they had received call after call between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m., they were telling me that they had received call and text of uh, people, uh, people calling off. And you know when you're the boss and people call off, it puts more on you. When you're the supervisor and people call off, it puts more on you. You, you got to get the work done and you got to explain to your boss why, why people are calling off and why you're allowing people to call off. And they were telling me it, it must be because it's Friday the 13th. I didn't even know it was Friday the 13th. They said, I know that it's Friday the 13th because my Friday started 13th and at 5 a.m. when people started calling and texting me and telling me they couldn't go to work. He says, and I've been talking to them, and I've been telling them, and I've been working with them. And and I said, your grace is running out. He said, that's it. And he said to me, he says, that's it. He said, I've been showing them grace. He said, I've been showing them grace. He says, I've been talking to them. I've been talking to them, and I've been showing them grace. And that part was all good, and that was all good. I say, yeah, grace, grace. I, I say, you're running out of grace. He says, and nobody shows me grace. That's when it took a turn. I was ready for it. I was showing them grace. But he, he then uttered the words to me, but nobody, nobody ever shows me grace. Maybe my wife shows me grace sometimes, but I'm not even sure my kids show me grace. He says, I've been showing them grace, and nobody shows me grace. He says, he says I've, been, I've been giving them grace, and nobody shows me grace. I want to tell you um, what I told him, which is, you've been given grace. You're you're standing in grace. Y'all who are sitting down, y'all are sitting in grace right now. Your your children, they go to school in grace, and they, they come home in grace. When, when you travel where you travel, you, you are traveling in, in grace. When, when you're able to, to put your clothes on your own body, you're, you're putting your clothes on by, by grace. And if you can't do it on your own and somebody comes alongside of you and, and they help you, that, that is the very grace of God. The, the fact that you're in your right mind or have a reasonable mind, you, you, are, you are operating in in grace because God has given each one of us grace it is the unmerited favor of God grace it it is the empowerment by God to then do good in the world that's God's grace I don't want anybody to leave here thinking that you haven't been given you haven't been given grace the fact that you know where you are grace of God If you came with somebody, if you came with them and maybe y'all ain't on the best of terms right now, but but, but you're here and you're here, it's the grace of God. If you've been forgiven, the grace of God. If somebody's come along and encouraged you, it's the very grace of God. We, We stand, we move, we live in God's grace. Songwriter says, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, I didn't cut through the field. I'm sorry, but, but, but the grace is, it's amazing grace. When, when I was writing the sermon, I was thinking to myself, oh, we used to sing about how amazing God's grace is. Y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember some of us grew up in this church and, and we were in what I call the old church and, and the deacons and folks would stand up front and I can't sing it like they sang it, but they were singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And I was a kid, I didn't even know the words. Through many dangers, toils, and, and snares. And, and then you hum along because you didn't know the words. But you know what I just said isn't quite right. Because that's not how they sang it. I said it way too fast. That's not how they sang the song. They, they, they sang it much slower. They, 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 they drew the words out. Amazing. I can't sing for the visitors. I can't sing. So it ain't about the song. Just stay with me. Amazing grace. Everybody that's talking about me and you know how to sing, you should sing. How sweet. That say, that had ten syllables in it. A wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Y'all who are older than me and know the words, keep it going. Come on. Brought me say. See, we don't know the words now. Thus far and grace will lead me. I, I, I sang the song because there was something that the deacons knew about singing it slow that you start remembering, rehearsing, reminding yourself about the grace of God. It's amazing grace. It's wonderful grace. It's a merited grace. It's undeserved grace. The fact that I got a job, grace. The fact that I got somebody to get on my nerve, grace. The fact that I got some kids that, that worked me to work, grace. The fact that I know my wrist hurt or my leg hurt or my back hurt, grace. The grace of God. Thank God for his grace. Bless you, God, for your grace. If we told it all, none of us are worth it. Not even on our best day. It's nothing but grace. However many days I had, grace. Roof over my head, grace. The ability to move, it's grace. It's God's it's God's grace. Amazing. Amazing grace. Bless your God. Thank you for your grace. I'm sorry, that's... The the intro went too far. Amen. Praise God. I'm just thankful for the grace of God. You don't have to tell me I stand in grace. I preach in grace. I, I move in grace. The, the intellect, whatever little bit I have, it's nothing but God's grace. Undeserved grace. Unearned grace. Let me, let me give you four very high points and we'll, we'll get on out of here. Paul was arrested by grace. The jailer was arrested by grace. You know the facts. The, 
Paul and Silas, uh, Timothy and, 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 and the brother who, who wrote the book, they are, they are traveling and they are preaching and they're talking about Jesus. They're praying and they're talking about Jesus. They're moving around. They're talking about Jesus. And folks don't like when you talk about Jesus. You can talk about the universe. Nobody gets mad. You talk about the universe. You, you, you can talk about sage. Burn whatever you want to burn. Nobody gets mad if you talk about sage. You, you, you can talk about philosophy. Nobody gets troubled if you talk philosophy. You can talk politics even. But they were talking about Jesus. And in time you say Jesus. There's a problem when you say Jesus. So they were talking about Jesus. And um, um, they got arrested for talking about Jesus. They didn't just get arrested. They got beat down for talking about Jesus. Like, they, they, they got whooped for talking about Jesus. And then they were imprisoned and they were shackled in, in bonds because they were talking about Jesus. And the most that happened to us is we got to waste some gas to get here and talk about. Burn some gas to talk about Jesus. Amen. Nobody beats us. Nobody arrests us. Praise God that we can talk freely about Jesus. Nobody comes and tells us to shut up when we talk about Jesus. So I want to encourage us to talk about Jesus. They were talking about Jesus. They were arrested for talking about Jesus. The record is at midnight, uh, imprisoned as they were, they did something strange for most of us. Amen. Folks just sitting. Y'all good? I'm up here. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Good to see y'all. Amen. Praise God. Everybody say good to see you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Love. I like that. Hugs. They were talking about Jesus. They got locked up for talking about Jesus. And the record is at midnight, something happened. We jumped to the earthquake that happened. But before the earthquake, they were engaged in a couple of disciplines that I just think we ought to engage in. The, the writer says that at midnight, before the earth started quaking, before, before the walls started shaking, before the bonds were broken, they were doing two things, two very simple things they're free to do. And I just told you, for one of them, you don't even need talent to do it. They were praying on the one hand, and they were praising God on the other hand. Did, did you hear the context of, of this celebration? It, it is after being arrested and beating and bound that they were praying to God and they were praising God. After being beaten, after being locked up, after being thrown into a, a dark dungeon, it is believed. They, they were praying to God and they were praising God. They were talking to God and they were celebrating God how many of y'all don't raise your hands don't do it how many of y'all pray to God outside of here today amen y'all ain't got to raise your hand but amen amen anybody talk to God today you talk to him did it cost you anything to talk to God it didn't cost you nothing to talk to God did did you have to pick up your cell phone to talk to God. Did, did you need electricity in your house? Amen. Because, hey, hey, we've been there sometime, right? Maybe not everybody got. Did, did you need running water to talk to God? Did, did, did you need anybody to co-sign what you were saying when you were talking to God? It was absolutely free that you were able to open up your mouth and talk to God. It it didn't cost you nothing, no time, no energy. Did you have to travel here to talk to God? He says they were, they were talking to God. What were they talking to God about? I don't know what they were talking to God about. But I know they weren't talking to God. I assume they weren't talking to God about the fact that they had been beaten. I don't think they were talking to God about the fact that they had been beaten. I don't think they were even talking to God about getting out of what God, hear it, allowed them to be put in. 
Because that's what I do. That, am I alone? I talk to God about getting out of <laughs> what, I've been, what I've been put in, what I've been put myself in. I'm talking to God. God, get me up out of here. Do you know what these people have done to me, God? Lord, get, no, 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 no. I, I know it because when they had the chance to get out, they didn't get out. When they had the chance to run, they didn't run from the situation. They, they, they were praising God and praying to God. They, they were celebrating God. Even in a bad situation. Let me tell you, you can pray to God and you can praise God even when everything ain't going all right. Matter of fact, that's a good time to talk to God. It, it's, it's a good time to talk to God. God, you know what I'm in, and, and I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm here, but I just, I just want to talk to you about where I'm at. It's a good time to talk to God, and we know that. We, we've been taught that. We got that. But do you not know it's good to praise God in the midst of your problems and in the midst of your predicament, and in the midst of your circumstance, and in the midst of your challenge, that's a good time to celebrate God. That don't sound right, do it. That don't sound right, do it. Why, why would I praise God? Do you know what I'm going through? Why would I praise God in my sicknesses and in my weaknesses and in my afflictions? Why, why would I praise God? Why, why, why would I make much to do about God when I'm going through? And I say it all the time. Scripture says that God inhabits the what? The, oh, y'all been listening. I got to praise him. The, God, here it's the God sits in. He, he dwells in the praises of his people. He, he rests in our praise. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what condition our praise is raised in. God shows up in our praise. When God shows up. Y'all, y'all, y'all know people that 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 when they show up, you know what they bring in with them. Some of y'all went out last night with some people, and you knew when they showed up. Come on, y'all, y'all don't act like that with me. Don't, 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 don't do me like that. You, you, you know what they carry in with them. That's why you called them, because you know what they gonna bring when they come. And sometimes it's some food, and sometimes it's a bottle, and sometimes you, you, you want somebody with some protection. Y'all with me? Man, I, I, I'm going to preach it how I'm preaching. I was in a barbershop the other night getting trimmed up, and a brother came in, and he didn't look quite right. And I tried to do the pastoral, hey, brother, how you feeling? Mm. He talking to the barber. This is an appointment only barber. He ain't got no appointment. And I'm looking, I'll say, it's me, it's the barber, it's a couple of ladies doing hair. He like, how long y'all going to be here? And he keep going in his pocket. I said, man, man, I ain't got nothing on me. I ain't got Sister Pruitt with me. I ain't got Brother Joe with me. I ain't got Brother Claude with me. Where's Pastor Michael at when you need him? Because I know certain people, I didn't just gave up, I didn't told y'all they secret. If they come, they're carrying something with them. I say, Lord, something might happen to me in this barber shop. The visitor's like, we ain't never come back to this church. They, something might happen to me up in here. Do you not know that when God, when God shows up, God is carrying something with them. Now, I need, because they don't believe me, I need a few people to testify that God has showed up and God has had some stuff with him. God, he brought peace with him. Troubled mind, he gave me peace. 
Yeah, he showed up and brought comfort with him. He, he showed up and brought strength with him. He showed up and brought healing with him. He, he showed up and brought compassion with him. He showed up and gave me understanding. He showed up and gave me faith to keep on keeping on. God will show up. The Bible says that as they were praying and praising, God showed up. The walls came down. The doors came down. The chains came off when God showed up. What would it look like? What would it look like in your home if you started praying and praising God? If you started praising and started praying to God, what, what might fall off in your life if you started praising God right where you are? That's why in my house, we ain't, ain't talking about nothing else but what God can do up in here. If we got to pray, we're going to pray about it up in here. We're going to praise God through what we go through. Because he's carrying power with him. Carrying strength with him. He, he's bringing help with him. And the walls came down. And the jailer, because I'm, I'm done. I got five minutes. The jailer, the jailer recognizes what's happened. And fear creeps in. This messed me up. This messed me up. Y you've heard it. The jailer. Y'all read it and I shut up so you could hear it for yourself. The, the, the jailer recognizes that the walls have come down. The walls have come down. He says, oh my God. Because if you've been locked up. You've been beaten up. And the walls come down. You running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm up. I'm out. The record is that he, he thought they had escaped. <laughs> Can I tell y'all something? This, just throwing this in. Free people ain't got to escape nothing. I ain't got to escape nothing. I'm free. I'm free. Who the son is set free. It's free indeed. I ain't bound by nothing. I, I don't care. In chains, I ain't bound by nothing. I'm free. Whatever happened, I'm free. Praise God, I'm free. He supposed that they had escaped, but they were already free. Paul cried out, verse 28, with a loud voice. Do not harm yourself. He had taken his sword Y'all say, why he do that? I'll tell y'all why he did it. He took his sword because if, if those prisoners had gotten loose, nobody was going to ask him who sent the earthquake, how did it happen, how did the wall. He would be responsible for them being set free. The fact that they had been set free, hear it, would cost him his life. He figured, out. out I'll kill myself rather than have them torture me for these folks being set free. I'll, I'll, I'll kill myself rather than have them whoop me and beat me and, and do all that they're going to do to me for these folks who've been set free. I, I'll do it quick. I ain't going to have them. I ain't going to have them. Can I come closer, y'all? Y'all don't hear it. I heard it. I heard it. Y'all don't hear it. Be before I have them torture me. Yeah, before I have them parade me and make, make a spectacle and a scene out of me. I'll kill myself before I have them torture and, and kill me. Make it plain, Pastor. I'll kill myself before I have them crucify me because somebody has been set free. I just want to tell the jailer what I want to tell y'all. You don't have to kill yourself to, because they've been set free. You, There's been one who's already paid the price. There was already one who was wounded for our transgressions to set us free there. There was already one who was bruised for our iniquities that, that we might be set free. There, there, there was always one. There's already been one who's died that we might be free. We don't need your little life. Paul said, don't harm yourself. Jesus already died. Don't harm yourself. Jesus is already 
Jesus has died. Jesus has paid the price. And, and I know some. I know some. I know some. I'm, I'm glad about it. That health fair they had, uh, I went through the little bag. I got my little blood pressure taken, and I got, got my sugar, and everything was good. Amen. Praise God. That was good. I could work on the weight. That was good. Sister Mika looking side eye because she know that I'd be getting that cake at the repast. I ain't going to say who slid me the cake, but the sugar was good. But in the bag that they gave, <laughs> in the bag that they gave, I pulled it out. It was a little lock and it was a number and a lock and I don't know how it works, but I read the words on the lock and it was suicide prevention. Call if you need help. Because there are a whole lot of folks out here because of life, sicknesses, injustices, things didn't go the way they thought they would go, disappointments, things that they did wrong, and, and, they, and, and they don't think they can make, like there are a lot of folks who are unhappy with themselves and, and where they are, and they want to do harm. They, they consider doing harm to themselves. And even on your best day, and you can look good and smell good, you can want to harm yourself. Paul said, no, no, do yourself no harm. Jesus died for you. Do yourself no harm. Jesus set you free. Do yourself no harm. I'm coming to your pew. Do yourself no harm. Pastor, I ain't never thought about physically hurting myself. What about the things you say to yourself? What about how you talk to yourself? Do yourself no harm. Jesus died for you. He made you in, your, in his image. Do yourself no harm, sister. If everybody leave you, do yourself no harm. If you never make the kind of money you want to make, think you should make, do yourself no harm. If they never come back, and if they come back and they don't stay, do yourself no harm. Don't harm yourself physically. Don't, don't harm yourself mentally, emotionally. Don't, don't harm yourself. Come on, church. Do yourself no harm. If, 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 the, if the thoughts that you think are thoughts that tear you down, you harming yourself. God loves you. God loves you. If don't nobody else love you, God, God loves you. Do, do yourself no harm. I know you didn't do it all the way right. I don't do it all the way right. Not every day, not every time. But he died for me knowing what I was. So while we work to get it together in the power of the spirit, I ain't going to harm myself. Paul says, don't, don't do yourself any harm. You got nothing to fear here. Paul says, and I'll say it to you, cut through the field. Paul says, um, we're still, we're all here. Y'all with me? He says, we're here. We ain't went anywhere. Can I tell you, Jesus is still here. Jesus is still on the right hand of the Father. He's still here. Still got all power in his hands. Jesus is still here. He's still able. He's still here. He's still doing things that we don't even see and we don't know how he working all things together in the end. Like he's still here. We, we, his ways are there beyond our, but he's still here. He, he will never leave you. He'll, he'll never forsake you. Jesus is still here. And, and when the proof of the pudding don't show that he's here, he's still here. He working it out for your good the, the bible says you know it so you preach it with me that that all things work together for good for those who who love the lord who are the called according to his purpose that means stuff i call good and stuff i call bad that means the stuff i see and the stuff i don't see all things work together for good today is working out for my good Sitting here right now, some kind of way, it's working together for my good. Those who are here and those who ain't here, it's all working together for my good. And it was grace that entered in. It was grace. 
And I told y'all about grace, so I'm not going to re-preach it. I'm about to land this plane. And here is the beauty of the text. Y'all see what happened? You say, don't harm yourself. We're, we're all here. We all here. Then I, I, I want you to hear it. He says, this messed me up. He says, oh. He says, what must I do? What must I do? To be saved? I don't remember them talking about him, about what it means to be saved. Do y'all, we read chapter 16. Man, I can't, I'm going to just have to talk it. Can I talk it? Can I just talk it? We read all of chapter 16. The vision came to Paul. They go to Macedonia. Come over here. Come help us. They go down to the river. They meet the woman. They, they talk and we don't know what they talking about. We never hear nothing of what they talking about. But some kind of way she gets saved. They walking around town and the slave, enslaved girl, the, the one who's demon possessed, says they, they come from, they've come from, from the Lord. They are messengers of the Lord. They, they have come to talk to you about salvation. I can't even go there. They get arrested for talking running their mouth, but we never get the message of what they say. But somewhere along the way, because the Bible is showing us what we already know, people going to talk. People going to talk about everything that other people think are worth talking about. You sit in the barbershop, they talking about rappers they don't even know. It just messed me up. I ain't hating on, like, I listen to rap, right? All that. They, visitors say, that's another strike. Um, I love y'all visitors. I'm just teasing this congregation. They talk. They talked so much in the barbershop the other night. I thought they knew these people. I thought they knew them. Like, I thought that was their cousin. Like, they went to school with them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, say the artist's name. I can't think of them. Lou. Whatever. You know, Sister Red, you know, she going to be in St. Louis, and you know the whole city coming out tonight. You, you know, it's going down tonight. Yeah, yeah, because she was going to stay down at the Four Seasons, but uh, yeah, they didn't like the Four Seasons, so I think, yeah, they told me she down at the, like, they know what hotel she in. They know, yeah, she was down, yeah, 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 we saw him in the loop the other night. Yeah, the whole city, and then little, little whoever, he going to be in town too. Yeah, you know him and little Dirt, they don't like each other. Like, like they just talk. I was like, man, they know these people. They talking like they, they know these people. I don't know them. So I'm just sitting there looking, looking dumbfounded about being dumb. I'm just sitting there. I don't know them. I don't, I don't know them. Man. I didn't even know Sister Red was in town until they told me. I didn't know she was in town. Until the, until my praise team told me, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know they was in town. I let my son stay with me. I let my son go downtown Friday night. He said, I'm going to, to the slew football game. I said, be safe. Then I found out Sister Red was in town. And I know who coming out to see Sister Red, the praise team. But some other people going to see Sister Red, and he down there, he said, it was lit, Dad. Everybody, everybody was out for Sister Red. And I said, man, look how the word thing got out. Everybody talking. My question is, who going to talk about Jesus? You going to let the word get out about Jesus? You going to tell somebody about Jesus? You're going to tell, man, I was, about to, I was about to end it all. Like that Philippian jailer, I was about to enter it all. Man, Jesus sent the word. Man, Jesus, 
Someone, my, my sister called me and just prayed for me out of the blue. That's how folks don't know Jesus. Out of the blue. Man, I was about to end it all, and then I met Jesus. Man, I've been walking around feeling guilty and shame about all that I've done and all the places that I went and all, all of what was poured in me, and I just poured it back out. But then I met Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Oh, I can tell you about Jesus. Now, I can't talk about him like the pastor talk about him. As a matter of fact, don't. Just tell him about who Jesus is to you. He died for me. He died for you. Yeah, he died for me. Who was this Jesus? Jesus? He was the son of God. God sent his son in the flesh. He just told him, the record says, what must I do to be saved? Because somebody was talking about Jesus. And then the beauty of belief came in. And I'm done. I'll just read it to you. They say, believe in the Lord Jesus. And you will be saved. Oh, I'll teach it sometime. Not just you, but your household. Y'all with me? Your household. Which, which means, and this is deep, everything that's connected to you. When I walk in Jesus, everything that is connected to me. Your, your household. You say, well, pastor, I'm in them, but I don't see it working in my household. Don't judge it too soon. Don't you judge it. It ain't for you to judge. You just do what you do. No, they didn't come with you today. They may not come with you next week, but don't you judge it too soon. He's a way maker. Don't you judge it too soon. He'll turn, a, he'll turn the crooked line straight. Don't you judge it too soon says everything connected to him the, the whole household was saved and that's the beauty of Jesus you think Jesus doing one thing and Jesus got something else going that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard that neither has it entered into the heart of man what, what God has got for you he, he says come on now your whole household and they baptized that man and they took in the house. And then there's this beauty. There's this beauty. Oh, there's this beauty thing. Counselors, y'all come on up. The, the, the jailer, he washed their wounds. Y'all remember they had been beat down. He, he washed their wounds. He brought them to his house. He set a table for him in his house. He fed him in his house. And they rejoiced in his house. How beautiful it is to be in Jesus. You may not ever have everything you want to have. Matter of fact, you ain't going to have everything you want to have. What a beautiful thing it is to know Jesus. What a beautiful thing it is to be saved by his grace through faith in Jesus. What a beautiful thing it is when brothers and sisters get together and just break bread and we can, we can talk about the goodness of Jesus. All that he's done for us. How wonder, how sweet a picture it is. Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up in the house. And it was the grace of God. It was the grace of God that arrested. That arrested them. I didn't read it. I didn't read it, but I want you to read it. Because y'all want to know what happened. They went back to the jail. They went back to jail. Paul and Silas, they got cleaned up, they got fed up, and they got led back to the jail. And the next day, when, when the authorities were wanting to understand what happened, they, they were presented to the authorities. Oh man, this story's so good. They, they were presented and they told them something I want you to I want you to take hold of and I want you to begin to speak it and to live it out. 
They said, um, y'all have arrested us and beaten us. And they said, we're Roman citizens. You can't treat us like that. We're Roman citizens. We belong to the kingdom, Brother Morris, to the kingdom. We're citizens of the kingdom. Y'all know what they did? They let them go. They said, we didn't know you was. <laughs> we didn't know who you were. You are a child of the king. You're a citizen. Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven. You are a, you are a citizen of, you're in the earth, but you're a citizen of heaven. Which means the stuff that's holding you, that's arrested you, that's taken your mind and shackled you, people who try to manipulate and use and, and profit off of you, your own negative thoughts and leanings that, that seem to try to bind you. I want you to say, I'm a child of the king. I'm a, I'm a citizen of heaven. You got to let me go today. You got to let me go today. I, I end the series just saying, I'm not letting anything bind me today. You got to let me free today. They let them brothers go because they were citizens of the, of the kingdom. And so today, for somebody who's sitting in here, you don't know Jesus, you haven't accepted Jesus, I'm telling you, you have citizenship rights in heaven. It says, the day you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord. These folks, they will come with you. They'll come over to you. They'll pray for you. Let today be the day. You say, I'm a, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. I'm a citizen. I want all the rights, the privileges that come with being a citizen of the kingdom. And you might be here and you said, I've accepted Jesus, but I have, I have strayed from home. Many of us have strayed from home. Come back home. This may not be the home you started in, but God just brought you here. This would be a good home. Come on home. They'll come, they'll pray with you about it. They'll talk with you outside in the hall there about it. If you're here today, you're in either one of those categories, just raise your hand, they'll come to you. If you stand in need of prayer, which we all do, they'll come, they'll pray for you. They'll pray with you. If, if you heard the Lord speaking to you today, just raise your hand. They'll come to you. They'll talk. They'll pray. Anybody. Anybody. I know God was speaking to somebody in here today. Somebody needs prayer. Somebody needs to come home. Somebody needs to accept Jesus, the gift of salvation today. Won't you come? Won't you come? God is faithful. Let him arrest you today. You had a plan for today. And raising your hand wasn't one of them. Let him arrest you today. Let him seize you today. It might just be for prayer. I need prayer. Pray for me. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. They're going to sing and they're going to stand. They're saying forever faithful towards me. Bless you, God. Always providing for me. Bless your name, God. Great is your mercy towards me. Bless your name, God. How faithful. Bless your name, God. Day after day. Day after day. Great is your mercy towards me, God. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. We lift up your name, God. 
Speak to somebody's heart today, oh God. Move in their heart today, oh God. Help them to hear your voice today. For you are faithful. You are true. You are kind. Bless your name. You're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We cry out to you. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness. Bless your name. Bless your name. Have mercy in this space, O oh God. Cover in this space, O oh God. Give power to the weak in this space, O oh God. Health and healing in the name of Jesus in this space, O oh God. Regulate troubled minds in this space, O oh God. Encourage our hearts in this space, O oh God. Deliver us today, O oh God. Take away anxiety in the house today, O oh God. Men, families today, O oh God. Husbands and wives today, O oh God. Sons and daughters to mothers and fathers, heal today, O oh God. Cover our children in this space, O oh God. Protect them from the dangers they see. Protect them from the dangers that lurk in dark places, O oh God. Protect and preserve us, O oh God. Give us wisdom to keep fighting the good fight of faith, O oh God. Touch our households today, O oh God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Go with those who are receiving cancer treatments today, O oh God. Touch those who have dialysis this week, O oh God. Every chronic pain, O oh God, touch it. We're healed. We claim healing in the name of Jesus today, O oh God. We claim every promise you've given us in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Comfort the grieving in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Move through every seat, every aisle, every heart, O oh God. Touch, O oh God. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, O oh God. Bless your name in the space, O oh God. Thank you for your spirit, O oh God. Thank you for your power, O oh God. Thank you for your kindness, O oh God. Your faithfulness, O oh God. Your mercy, O oh God. Thank you for your grace, O oh God. You're worthy of all of our praise. We bless your name in the house. Hallelujah to your name. Glory to your name. Bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Won't you stand all over the house? Won't you stand as we prepare to leave this space? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And whatever you go through this week, whatever sorrow you experience, whatever joy, may the Lord give you peace. It's peace that I leave you with in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. amen.